I'm Ken. My son Lonnie and my grandson Riley went to a fishing trip at Sitka, Alaska. The last two days of August, first three days of September 2016. Um, we got the about a two hour layover in Seattle before we got on a 737, a little bit nicer airplane to fly the rest of the way. As you can see it was kind of overcast. Um, the flight was pretty uneventful. A lot of clouds until we dropped in to Sitka. And then when we got to Sitka or flying in, we could uh, drop down of the clouds and there was beautiful islands and unbelievable scenery. Islands everywhere. It was just gorgeous. And here we are coming down now toward our landing point, which is uh, Japansky Island. Which uh, was actually named by the Russians who found a couple stranded Japanese fishermen there. And is connected by a bridge. It used to be a ferry to take you across there, but now they have a bridge that takes you across to the main city of Sitka. That's the uh, O'Connell Bridge, and that bridge joins us up with uh, Baranoff Island, uh, which is the main big island where Sitka is at. Very large island, uh, 1,607 square miles of land. Yeah, and Sitka population is only about 9,000. There's the bridge, um, which doubles uh, during tourist season. Um, Sitka is very much a fishing town. Uh, that's the Rockville Lighthouse, built by the local veterinarian. It is also a bed and breakfast. Yes, yeah, and this is the uh, Russian Orthodox Church, built in 1834. Uh, this is uh, Skagway Bill. This is a Russian lookout tower. Uh, it's a replica. It's not the real one. The real one was burned down. Main industry is commercial fishing in this area with several really nice harbors with commercial and privately owned boats. Beautiful weather. Just gorgeous. Here's the uh, hotel that we were staying at for the first two days. There's Grandpa coming out, Riley. This is another harbor on our way to Indian River. Totem Park. It's a walking path. It's about a mile's walk from our hotel. As you see, the weather has drastically changed since we've flown in. It's uh, cloudy with a little, lot of blue skies. So here's some of the scenery on our way on the walking path. This is me and Grandpa at the start of Totem Park. Lots of big totems. Beautiful, several of them in this here park. The trails are gorgeous and the trees are very large. Here's right on the shore. This is in, in, the, in Totem Park itself, uh, looking out into the sound. Um, there's Riley and Grandpa again on the beach. Notice how it's very lush, moss on the trees, um, more like a rainforest. Trails are very, very beautiful. Several miles of trails. Very flat, very nice. So here we are getting to the uh, bridge over the Indian River in the uh, Totem Park. As we look down the bridge, there are many salmon, pink salmon that are on the verge of dying after their spawn and the river's just plumb full of them. Yeah, thousands upon thousands. Here's the mouth of the river, actually, right where it meets the ocean. Uh, you can't fish this in this river until you are in salt water, so at the very mouth uh, you can fish in these areas, but as you'll see, the salmon are not in great shape by any means. They're on the verge of death. A 
lot of dead ones on shore, but the birds are doing a good job picking them away. So we, me and Riley did try to fish these. Uh, we did snag a couple at first, but here's Riley jigging, and you were able to catch a few in the mouth, actually quite a few in the mouth, uh, using this technique. This is a male salmon. Um, this one had quite good color compared to the other ones that we snagged. It was a good fighter. Um, if you snagged them, it wasn't as fun to catch them because they were all raw and out. They were losing their energy. They were just done with their life. But if you caught them by the mouth, they were healthier and funner to catch. Yeah, definitely. And this is a pretty good one. You can still see the, the hook jaw and everything on it, but it's... Uh, Got a nice green back, um, still humped over. That's why they call them humpies. Gorgeous clear water. All right, here we are just getting on our charter boat, uh, leaving the harbor area now. And we just came from the Sitka Point Lodge where we stayed. And it was a great accommodation. It's a nice sized place with lots of room. And they cooked for us, had great meals, and uh, and uh, so it was a wonderful time. And here we are going out, the beautiful morning scenery. I mean, the gorgeous stuff there. Okay. This is me and Grandpa. Grandpa has a halibut on, and I have a Picasso rockfish. This is my first fish of the day. Uh, you can only keep one of those per day. Yeah, you can see how the uh, bladder, or actually it's the stomach pushing out of its mouth. Uh, we're in 300 feet of water here, uh, mainly halibut fishing, but of course uh, you'll catch all kinds of fish while you're halibut fishing. This is our uh, captain, Eli Brownell. He's worked for Sitka Point Lodge for 10 seasons, and uh, he really did a lot of work for us, helped us a lot. He's actually from uh, Idaho originally. Grandpa's reeling up a little halibut, not not quite big enough to keep. There's some color. Yeah, still nice halibut. Now here, I had just dropped my line down a ways and I got a hit and started going out and the, the guy says, well that's not a hell of it. Everybody clear the uh, clear the, the, the boat of all our fishing gear and stuff because it's a shark. Well, sure enough it's a shark. It's a blue shark, pretty good sized blue shark and he's trying to get it in here now. We're going to have to kill it when we do get it in and he has us all cleared away basically so we can get back away from shark here yeah they uh they don't appreciate the blue sharks i think they're a beautiful fish but uh the fishermen around there classify them as a trash fish so uh, unfortunately they they kill this one but it is a gorgeous fish Riley's catching another halibut. As you can see, the boat in the background, he's actually part of our charter also, staying at the Sick Point Lodge with us. Uh, we were just lucky enough to have our own boat with our family. Uh, most guys are paired together with uh, other groups of people, uh, sometimes six to a boat. I believe that one actually had six to a boat. But our guide, Eli, would call in to the other fishermen to let them know that we were catching fish so they had an opportunity to come out and catch halibut also with us. Uh, they limited out on their halibut. They weren't, they were there mostly for salmon. Uh, they limited out on their halibut in about an hour and went back to salmon fishing. That's a nice halibut that Riley just caught. I got a nice halibut on here also. 
we stayed in 300 feet of water pretty much all day and uh, we were enjoying ourselves catching quite a few fish as you can see in the background there's quite a bit of uh, mountain country back there and up in the shoreline and uh, beautiful water blue water and it was very easy to fish and we mostly caught halibut this day but we did catch yellow-eyed rockfish and one Picasso rockfish. This is the start of the second day after a good night's rest and a hearty breakfast. Uh, the overcloud was pretty okay this day but the sun so soon burned all the clouds away. We anchored up on the second day at 800 feet of water. Uh, we're trying to go for a little bit bigger halibut and we just strictly focused on halibut uh, this day and we did catch some banded rockfish. Yes, and we also caught some nice black cod that day as well. Yeah, it was quite a workout reeling it all up from 800 feet down. It at least take us 10 to 15 minutes to get them to the surface. And sometimes it would take grandpa longer than that. The slot limit on halibut is 43 inches to 80 inches have to be thrown back. I did end up catching a 59 inch halibut this day, which is about 80 pounds. And I caught a 50 inch halibut, which is about 60 pounds that day. Yeah, but I caught the majority of the halibut that day. Dad has a uh, nice halibut on here. Instead of uh, gaffing it, if it's real close to the slot, he'll just pull it in to measure the fish to make sure we don't hurt a fish that's over 43 inches. This is a commercial fishing boat that got stuck to our anchor and cut our day short. Eli wasn't too happy. Being our day was cut short by the commercial fishing boat being tangled in our anchor line, uh, we did stop on the way back to fish some shallower water, 90 feet, and uh, we did catch some uh, lean cod, which I believe I have on right now. This one was too big for the slot. Dad's was just under the slot. You can see it behind our guide, Eli, right there. This one had to go back. On the third day, we decided as a group to go salmon fishing. The uh, different methods of fishing salmon are mooching and downrigger trolling. Uh, we decided to downrigger troll, being that's what we were used to. But uh, mooching does offer uh, a fun way to catch salmon. It's like jigging. Here I am hooking into a coho salmon, which is also called silver salmon. And we caught several silver salmon that day, but this one was a pretty good one. Eli said these salmon were quite a bit bigger silvers than years past.
That is a good size silver there. Nice work, Dad. Beautiful big fish. I did get lucky enough to land one king salmon or a chinook salmon. The salmon fishing slowed down, so we decided to go back to fishing halibut to catch our limit for the day. We had no problem finding halibut. We just went back to the uh, same spot we fished day one and caught several more smaller halibut, but we did catch a few keepers. After Grandpa's, I hooked on to another one. This one turned out to be one of my bigger halibut of the trip. We ended our day in 50 feet of water jigging for black rock bass. We found a big school of fish and the action was non-stop. As you can see, the rock bass are really piling up and it didn't take us very much time to catch our limit.
This is another species of rockfish called a vermilion rockfish. The fish I have on right here is a yellow eye. This fish is probably 50 to 60 years old and you can only keep one a year. This is me sleeping after a long day of catching a lot of fish. This was a great trip for all of us. We all had a great time. The fishing was good, the weather was good. It was just a great trip. <laughs>